Next on BYUSN, the Big 12 Media Day Spectacular hits day two in Arlington, Texas at AT&T Stadium. BYU Athletic Director Tom Holmo joins us and reveals when BYU to the Big 12 first felt real to him. Plus, BYU quarterback Keen Slovis joins the program, and we, we react to the best sound of the day from yesterday. Commissioner Brett Yormark, Steve Sarkeesian, Kalani Sitake, and more. Another big show for another Big 12 Media Day special. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. We are live from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, in one of the locker rooms here the visitors at locker. the home of the Dallas Cowboys. Many an opposing team has come in here at once, Spencer. And uh, a, few, a, few, a few have lost as well. And some have lost, yes. Yeah, we, it's fun to think about some of the fun moments, obviously, in this stadium over the last, what has it been, open 13, 14 years Since so. 2009. Obviously, 09 Oklahoma, which we mentioned. But, yeah, um, hopefully one day BYU is playing for a Big 12 title game in this venue. Yesterday they announced that the uh, championship game will continue here through 2030. So hopefully BYU is in a couple of games by then in this stadium. Let's go. He is Texas air conditioning specialist Jerem Jordan. Oh, my I gosh. Merely Spencer It's Lindsay. like one, we mentioned it yesterday, 105 and humid. It's so hot outside. We are not going to be outside tomorrow. <laughs> We're going to do it inside here. We wrangled everything just so we can be here. Mainly it's us complaining uh, about being outside, but that's a good choice because what's fun is we did 18 interviews yesterday. You only saw five, I think. Um, we are going to air these the next couple of weeks. We've had some really fun conversations sure. with almost every team, some multiple guys from teams. Good to establish relationships and get to know these guys. Hey, we're gathering more. We're going to have 30-plus by the time that we are done in yes. Arlington. Pre-fall camp, you should feel like you know the Big 12 way better, which on today's show you're going to do. We're going to talk to uh, – Tom Homo, we we dig in, get into the weeds about what went into getting into the Big 12. When did he get the call? When did it feel real? Was there ever an invite to the Pac-12? Would BYU have said yes previously? Like, what led up to this? Keaton Slovis, the quarterback, y'all, will join the program based on our conversation yesterday. Hoping to talk to perhaps Cincinnati in the back end, perhaps other guests as well. We'll see what uh, we can get access to. Everyone's been great here. It's been a ton of fun. And yesterday was a big day one. Our opening segment presented by Feast Box, donating 10% of every order to Full of Hope, a charitable organization that feeds hungry families. And to properly open this day two BYUSN extravaganza and offer some backdrop for what happened yesterday, we're going to recap some of the top sound bites from day one. It was loaded, beginning with Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark and this statement on expansion from his introductory news conference. Relative to expansion, I said coming out of our spring business meetings at the Greenbrier that we have a plan, and we have a plan for expansion, and I'm not going to really address it today. You can ask me, <laughs> but I'm not really going to address it. We do have a plan, and hopefully we can execute that plan sooner than later. Ah, uh, okay. yes. Sooner than later. What does sooner than later mean? Well, sooner is a funny phrase to use because Oklahoma's leaving. But, I, yeah, who who is it? Does it include uh, now independent San Diego State? Like, the, if they're going to get kicked out of the Mountain West, it feels like, next year. UConn, Gonzaga. The Pac-12 TV deal, again, still feels like the crux of all of this. If it's, Next week is Pac-12 Media Day in Las Vegas. When they have a deal... And if it's not good enough for certain members, will they then want to bounce? And Brett Yormark told us two weeks ago on this program, we don't want people that are just about the TV contract. It's got to be a fit. But there are definitely some teams that would fit in this league in the future. Jerem, for what it's From worth, the there is a Colorado Buffaloes beat writer that is here covering Big 12 Media Days. That is not a joke. Okay. Then. Hey, just in case, maybe? I, like, thought, I thought the Buffalo like headdress was a little much. <laughs> for him? No, I'm just kidding. I, I didn't know that. There you I, go. I don't know how much I'm reading into that. Maybe this is just its just good journalism to be ready in case. Like, hey, in case Colorado does go to the Big 12, we probably should know what's going on. Listen, we're the new guys. What if this person has been coming here the whole time <laughs> because they were in the league? <laughs> That'd be funny. Okay, Brett Yormark also addressed what the open for business meant. Um, in fact, he addressed it in, in, like, PowerPoint form. It was yeah. awesome. Let's not forget during last year's Media Days event, I announced that the Big 12 was open for business. Since then, 
We've jumped ahead of the line and extended TV agreements with existing partners through 2031, creating tremendous stability and clarity for this conference. It's been a very busy 11 months, but it's not necessarily about where we've been. For all of us, it's about where we're going. As we look forward, we will continue to innovate, create, and positively disrupt. Let's I get my guy I a teleprompter for himself. Yes. Let's yeah. get him a teleprompter. I love that phrase. Positively disrupt. He's just doing things that have never been done. Yes. The, we love the innovation. We've talked to several head coaches that love the innovation, the creativity, the foresight. Like, how can the Big 12 in short, they don't want to say it out loud, but let's be honest. How can the Big 12 be the third best league? Uh, not only competitively on the field, but off the field, off the court, and, and off the mat, and so on. I love the direction of the league. I like the leadership, and Brett Yormark, and where is it, it's going. It's not creativity for creativity's sake. It's to further the brand, generate revenue, and continue to explore where they haven't gone in, in a lot of different spaces, creatively and revenue and so on and so yeah. forth, that BYU will benefit from. The open for business phrase, as he mentioned, got a ton of attention. Like expansion like, only. Oh, is, he's coming after the Pac-12. Well, we're not open for That's business. That's what we all thought you know? it was, yeah. And he clarified that with us on BYU Sports Nation a week and a half ago, and he's like, That's not what I intended. I was meaning that we're open to innovate and to positively disrupt. And then he proceeded to, you know, roll out the things that he's he's been doing and will continue to do. There was a big list behind him on, yeah. a, like, on a graphic. Yeah, yeah so that, that's it's not anything new, but it, it just was nice to see those itemized things. Like, yes. oh, yeah, well, they have accomplished a lot in 11 months. A goal is not a goal unless you write it down. Otherwise, it's a dream. And so these things are written out. Like, he comes from a business end, right? He comes from the entertainment industry. Like, he has different ideas for what could happen. Some of those are going to miss. But you cannot succeed if you don't have some failures. Otherwise, you're not getting up, up enough shots, if you will. Like, sure. Like, Steph Curry misses half of his threes. Well, the, nice, got, the nice part is he's tried, a lot of, he's tried a lot of things, so he's already learned a lot. So what, what he does, he feels like legitimately like the majority of it is going to work because he's already gone through the hard lessons. This, yes, and this is, this is dumb but simple. There's no lanyard here. The, ri the wristband is the access. It's just easy. It's just, this is the easiest, simplest media day I've ever been to. It's it's awesome. Like media event. It's just well put together. It's bigger than any individual school. It's been it's been awesome. And that's just a little insight into what this league is becoming. The commissioner also shared his opinion on where the Big Twelve stacks up from a depth standpoint among the major college football conferences. We were the only conference last season to send eighty percent of its teams to bowl games. I believe we are once again the deepest conference in America. All right, deepest conference in America. Now, okay. uh, what I read into that is that just, and coaches have said this to us, several coaches have come in here and said, it does not matter who you are playing. If you're picked to finish first or you're picked to finish 14th, it is going to be an absolute fight. And that manifested itself last year in the Big 12 Conference because Iowa State and West Virginia did not have good seasons. Iowa State went 4-8 and eight over, but they really pushed some of the top-tier teams, as did West Virginia. And that will continue with the now 14-team conference. So when he says deepest conference, I mean, top to bottom, Jim, like, who's – is there a – Bad team in the Big 12? There used to be. It was Kansas, and then they started the Kansas is good now. Like, they've got the best quarterback in the league. Like, we live in a world where there were more Kansas preseason all Big 12 players than Oklahoma. Like, what? That's crazy. Yeah, we thought Kansas would be a gimme. It's not. There's literally no gimmies on BYU's schedule. I only look at two automatic wins, and it's the first two. <sighs> That's it. Sam Houston and Southern Utah. I'm like, those Better be wins. There, there is there there are zero gimmies in the Big yeah, Twelve. Zero gimmies. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian was on the program yesterday. Really fun conversation with him. Addressed the media as well, talking about BYU's brand. He would know. You know, to me, BYU's been a national brand for decades. And going back to Coach Edwards and what he was able to do and some of the great teams and great players. Uh, and so for them now to be in a in a in a power five situation in the Big Twelve, 
uh, I'm happy for them. I'm happy for the for BYU. I'm happy for uh, their alumni and those players. I think it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, and then we get a chance to play it. You know, I, I'm glad we don't have to go to Provo. I get we get them in Austin, so that'll be fun. Yes, it will. October twentieth. Yeah, we're, we are looking forward to that. And I know a lot of BYU fans have already booked their trip for that showdown with Sark and the Longhorns. Kalani Satake also in his general media session discussed, among other things, BYU's recruiting status now in the Big 12 Conference. I mean, we're a faith-based institution, so we're you know, affiliated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and a lot of people don't know much about, about the church or about our mission, but our football program is right in alignment with with the mission of our church, and, and uh, you know we, and that's you know proclaiming our, our belief in Jesus Christ as our Savior. And that's there's a lot of people that fall in line with that, whether they're members of the church or not. And and it's just opened the doors as far as widen our net a little bit in recruiting. That is such an interesting perspective and insight into how BYU recruits because we've talked about the fit. Yeah, geographically, it's a little out there for Provo to get to these Big 12 it's schools. The but, school. but politically and with the religious backdrop, it feels like a great fit, and it actually is benefiting BYU in recruiting. It's them. like, it, listen, not every school is like a Christian private university. In the WCC, uh, that was the case. Um, but it, it is like-minded individuals who value the person, value ball, and value the, the things that matter. For BYU, it happens to be... You know, uh, football's fifth, uh, as Bronco said back in the day. Uh, but it, this is exciting. Regarding recruiting, Brett Yormark said a comment that I thought was the comment of the day. <laughs> it was fire. Someone said, you know, uh, what's your reaction to Texas and, uh, you know, Oklahoma leading this league in recruiting? He said, well, they haven't been in the Big 12 title game the last couple of years, so I wouldn't say <laughs> I, that. I don't know that that's happened. Let's be honest. Texas and Oklahoma, they always recruit in the top ten. They're oh. amazing. But this league is wide open from a competitive standpoint, yes. as you mentioned. TCU was the seventh pick team last year. They make the playoff. Kansas State was fifth. They won the league. The year before that, Baylor was eighth. Eighth, eighth and they won the league. Like, if you are in the bottom tier of the league, you have a chance, not only a chance, those teams have uh, been in the Big 12 title game or won it. And now all BOA fans are thinking, BOA is picked to finish 11th. You're telling me there's a chance. Listen, I... I think every team in this league, outside of probably, honestly, um, you know, West Virginia, has a chance to be in the Big 12 title game. Yeah. Like, they've got some things they got to fix. But what, what if they show up and, and run? They, they've had a, explosive offenses over the years. Let's go. Yeah, there were some fun skating remarks from several people <laughs> yesterday. Sonny Dyke said, hey, Missouri was playing a lot of Big 12 championships. Haven't seen that much in the SEC. And it was a competitive program. Not as often now. And He's he, not wrong. And he said, I don't know about you, but UCLA and Rutgers feels like a natural rivalry to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those Maryland-USC games are going to be awesome. Uh, it is what it is, man. Up next, BYU Athletic Director Tom Homo explains when BYU to the Big 12 first felt real for him, where he was when he got the call up to Power 5 status, and how close was BYU to joining the Pac-12? Don't go anywhere. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is sponsored by Beast Box Global Grill, a unique dining experience featuring Texas, Hawaiian, and Korean meats. Time to feast. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today.
on the next relative race. A third strike could mean elimination for teams green and black. You both have two strikes. The prize of immunity creates tension. You've got to turn around. All right, relax. We blew it. And John is introduced to the family he's always wanted. Like feeling the sense of joy, I don't know what that feels like. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live from Big 12 Media Days. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Let's just go ahead and keep the head coach theme rolling with these interviews and welcome in the man in charge of UCF football. He is Gus Malzahn. Coach, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. We appreciate you spending some time with hey, us. Hey, glad to be here. Uh, you, like BYU, new to the conference, yeah. and this is a, a cool deal here, to yeah. say the least, at yeah. at AT&T Stadium. So from your perspective, how, how has it been to be welcomed in this way uh, from UCF and, yeah. and bring that or that Orlando vibe into yeah. the Big 12. Hey, it's been great. There's so much excitement, you know, back home. Um, you know, the the first time going in a Power 5 conference, the Big 12 conference, one of the best football conference really uh, in the country. And just thinking about all the, the former players, former coaches, boosters that helped us get to that point, and it just feels real special, you know, to be the head coach of the program that's, that's taking that next step. And the, the openness and the parody often is uh, lipstick in reality, but that is not the case in this. Uh, yeah. It's it's Kansas State at five winning the league last year. TCU yeah. making the playoff at seven. Baylor, the eighth pick team three two years ago. Yeah. Literally, you got a chance. So how are you feeling about your team going into this year in a Power 5 league? Yeah, you know, you look at the schedule, uh, you know, there's no weeks off. Most schedules, matter of fact, most other power five uh, conferences there's a couple weeks that you can kind of catch your breath you can't and uh it's real special and i don't know about byu but we have five road games the new kid on the block conference games that's no joke and then we play boise state on the road too that's no treat as y'all know <laughs> yes so our schedule All is, is well. like one of the toughest schedules probably in the country um and then you just said it i mean the, it's top to bottom it's as good as it gets yeah byu's right there with you five conference road games and throwing hey, throw, guys throw, <laughs> throw in a trip to Arkansas as well. <laughs> okay. on the run. Yeah, you, we're in the same know. boat, guys. Okay, you, <laughs> you can know. feel my pain. Okay, good. <laughs> UCF, of the four newcomers, was picked to finish the highest at, at number eight. Uh, where would you place the expectations for your program this year, given that it is unique going into yeah. a Power 5 league, but you got a great team coming back. Yeah, you know, we're a program. They've been ultra successful way before I got there, and we're a program that expects to win championships, and you know that's what we talk about, and would that be extremely tough? Oh, there's no doubt, but that's how we think, and um, you know, that's how we recruit, and you know, our team, uh, we got a pretty veteran team coming back with a lot of experience, which is very good. We've got quality depth on both lines of scrimmage, which you need to when you take that next step. And then our quarterback's returning. So, you know, the pieces of the puzzle are there, but we're going to have to play really good football, win close games on the road, road games you got to find a way to win. So uh, it's a big challenge, but we're looking forward to it. Having previous experience, obviously, in the SEC at Auburn, how does that benefit UCF this year? You know, I really think it helps us. Uh, you know, most of my staff are with me, and, and we, we had quite a bit of success, won some championships. So we have a staff that's not going to be a shock to our system. Uh, we have a bunch of transfers, as a matter of fact, quite a few from the SEC. And uh, so we have a veteran group, and I really hope that helps. Coach, other than uh, not calling UCF Central Florida, what else do you want people to know about Gold, the Golden Knights? Yeah, it's uh, – <laughs> It is a great place to visit. I mean, uh, the best brands of the world in Orlando, Florida. It's an unbelievable place to live. Uh, our school is young. Uh, you know, we're big. Got 69,000 students. The average uh, age of our alumni is like either 36 or 37. Wow. So it's a different vibe than any place I've ever been. And when you come and experience the bounce house and yep. the crowds a young, energetic crowd, it's just really um, really special. Yeah. Well, BYU was there in 2014. I, I haven't forgotten. It was it was a loud, <laughs> okay. special okay. place. It was, it was big time. Yeah. Coach, we appreciate the time with us. Thanks yeah. so much. All right. Thanks for having me, Thank guys. You. All right. Uh, we spoke with BYU Athletic Director Tom Holmo at the very end of day one in Arlington, and he opened up on a lot of topics, including where he was when he got the call up to the Big 12 from previous Commissioner Bob Bowlesby, how close BYU was to maybe joining the Pac-12, and what's next on the Big 12 agenda list. This is Tom Homo. 
Tom, now that you've gone through the majority of this initial day of Big 12 Media Days, how would you sum up the experience that BYU has had here at AT AT&T Stadium? Uh, I think it's bigger than I would have expected. Um, I've been to Media Days a few times, and it's kind of routine. I don't think there's anything routine about today. It was exceptional in every way. I thought the commissioner did a great job of rallying the troops of um, letting everybody understand he's in charge and we're not done. And and that means we're not done moving forward in, in every way. I thought all the uh, coaches were super uh, collegial and very friendly with each other, and it's genuine. That's kind of a cool thing. And just the color and pageantry of college football is on stage. It's all real. It's good. July 1st, it got kind of realish july 12th here it's gotten kind of realish what what has this been like to kind of settle into we are in this league we are a power five team have you had like a moment where it was like oh it it became real or will that happen when BYU's playing games the moment that it first became real has already occurred and that was when bob bullsby asked me on the phone do you want to join the big 12 (laughs) that was real that's the one i almost I stumbled and fell. In 16 or 21? It's 21. Okay. Where were you when that happened? In a hotel room in Vegas. We were playing Arizona the next day, I believe it was. And he said, you know, just keep it, keep it under wraps, but it's happening. And it was real. I knew it. So uh, for me, I'm, I've been to, you know, over a dozen meetings with the ADs live. I've been on two or three dozen more Zooms. <laughs> so it's real, <laughs> believe me. We put a lot of work into this just already moving forward. But I, I, I totally understand that these are kind of significant traditional events. Media Day, it counts. And um, I look forward to it, but I kind of w- can't wait for it to be over because after this, it's just games, and that's what I'm here for. There are these poignant moments for sure. And Jeremy and I have uh, been discussing, you know, through live shows and interviews that like this, this is hitting home for us in a major way today, being an AT&T stadium and just like feeling part of something that is, is bigger. It's bigger. Than, it's bigger. Like, we, like we did the best we could, right, in independence mm-hmm. in a lot of different ways. From our end, that was, yeah, we throw our own media day. But to sit here in the Dallas Cowboys visiting locker room, talking with – all these uh, coaches and players is pretty special. So um, w- what has struck you about uh, this event and sort of what it means for BYU to be in the league and participate in a league? Because, hey, it's been a minute. I think what you just said is what struck me the most is we're in a league. Yeah. Being independent was kind of hit or miss. I mean, I think it was better than hit or miss, but it wasn't much better in some sometimes. We had some highs and we had some lows. But you're, if you're not in a league – there's just certain things that you miss, and one of them is the like this the camaraderie and the rivalries and you just all those things that you get used to, and I think that's kind of coming in more for me now. I've seen it a little bit when you walk into the room, and we've had meetings with the Big Twelve basketball coaches live, where we're in person, and you're like. Oh, boy, we're not in Kansas anymore, but we will be. (laughs) But we will be in Kansas. (laughs) Quite literally. Yeah, and I I think that being in the league, you know, I was in a league in high school. You know, you know, like one of the things that came to me today is I can't wait to start learning about how, you know, Texas Tech plays on the road and what their scheme is and how they recruit and when's a good time to play them at – in Lubbock, and there's so many questions that I haven't even thought of. So there'll be a transition period. Yeah, I I love that, too, because this year is sort of like, yeah, we've heard of you. Next year we're going to show up and be like, we know exactly who you are. We've played a game except for three or four, which would be fun. BYU has such a unique legacy and such a far-reaching ability because of the Lavelle Edwards era and coaching trees and all the people that have worked around him and with him, and certainly you can appreciate that because you are part of his coaching tree as well. Uh, but it has it has made the transition and the communication in the transition feel smoother as we talk to these coaches and players. That they know who BYU is. They know where we come from. What has that been like for you to watch that and connect with them on that level of, you know, not just Lavelle, but the BYU brand? I mean, I love it. It's kind of one of the cool things because 
my whole career like playing with the 49ers at Cal, Stanford, wherever I would go anywhere in athletics, if it's football, people would ask me about Lavelle. People would ask me about Glenn Tuckett in college. He had a, you know, I think the legend of Lavelle, you know you're a legend. Well, I know he's a legend, not just because they named the stadium after him, but <laughs> it's like we learned the lessons when we were there. They're applicable 40 years later. That's legend. And, like, today everybody's saying, man, did you hear that story about they're talking about Lavelle? And I'm thinking, man. That's he's been he's been gone for a little while. Yeah, but he, he wasn't active as a coach since when? What was that year? Since two thousand. Two thousand. So it's been a long time since he's been active, and yet people are still talking about him and still learning. And the the one that's the most and the most pertinent for me is Kalani. Yeah, is that you can't have a conversation with Kalani that Lavelle then come up at some point in time in some way. And uh, as long as that's happening, I feel we're in a good spot. In 2000, we could not have predicted that we would still be talking in the same reverential tone about Lavelle at Big 12 Media Day. Like, this is this is special. Like, yeah. what we're experiencing today is special. Give me a sense of sort of the road, the journey, the dark times of when you didn't know if this would ever happen. I never really looked at that. I mean, it, I knew it might not happen in my administration but I, it's just it's i believe and i can say this on byu tv with you guys i just it's byu it's going to happen mm. we it's like the cubs they're going to win a world series at some point at some point don't rile dave mccann up here they were going to win a world series you I, felt it was going to have like no like question. destiny it was no. going to occur right. i just mm. couldn't imagine because i've seen so much of it since i know the good and I've seen the struggle, and I know the negative part that people will attribute to why we're not in. I know all that, and the, it just doesn't reason out for us, and we're super biased. But I think just in time, and the stars had to align for sure. It had to be the exact right time, and Texas and Oklahoma had to leave. Hmm. And so I, I just want to express my thanks to Texas. <laughs> Texas and Oklahoma for making it possible. If they hadn't have left, it, you know, it might not have happened. What, was there a point, I, I, at least in my mind, and I could be way off, obviously in the kind of mid-90s when the Big 12 kind of combined the Big 8 and the, what was it, the SWAC, obviously BYU wanted in. Was it always kind of like, hey, the Pac-12 would be like the geographical fit, we want to be in there, or was there a we want to be in the Pac a Big 12 at some point? You know, I really wasn't there at that time, but I've had an opportunity to talk to Rondo and, Rhonda Felberg, former AD, and, and Val Hale was a young um, uh, communications guy back in those days and then became the AD. So we've had those communications, and I know the stories well. I've heard the angst. So as you, as you piece it all together, it was, you know, the Pac-12 makes perfectly geographical sense. But kind of beyond that, there's there's just kind of too many issues that came up along the way. And, um, you know, just a good friend of mine, um, we, we, we had some conversations with the Big 12, with the Pac-12, um, before we got into the Big 12. And they weren't with, they weren't official and they weren't formal, but there were people in their circles that wanted us to come, high-ranking people in the Pac-12. And um, it was, you know, was it close? I kept thinking, is this real? I and mean, is this going to happen? I mean, it's too, too, it hasn't happened in the past based on what I've seen. And, and it just kind of simmered. And then, boom, we're in the Big 12. And then I'm like, all that effort and energy. Because one of the things that's always been baffling to me is nobody plays the Pac-12 in all sports more than BYU. Yeah, yeah. And, no. and, and the relationship was great. I mean, we had, like, contracts with B, with uh, the Pac-12 in their network because we played them so much that it was just like, check, it's BYU, we yeah. get it, we'll do it, we'll we, deal we with it. We exchange footage all the time. That's what I'm saying. They were great, yeah. And so, like, yeah. and, and when you see that and you expect that, you know, good things are going to happen and it doesn't, it's maybe it's just not meant to be. And so the Big 12, there's reasons that we've been talking, and that thing 
came together. Would you have said yes to the Pac-12 if invited previous well, to I mean, 21? Well, I'm not, I'm not going to answer that question because it did not happen, and I, I don't deal – it's hard for me to deal with what ifs, but – like, I, what would you think we would have said? Yes. Yeah, I would think maybe, but who knows? But in the end, it feels like culturally the fit is the best in the Big 12. Well, and that this is going to work yeah. uh, even better. I mean, and, and I can just say when we walked into that room for the first meeting, I felt like we belonged. And I felt like Cincinnati belonged and UCF and Houston. Houston. Yeah. I felt like we all, they, they were up their arms around us right away. Another interesting point is when we came in is that I felt like Oklahoma and Texas for two years, they had to be in the they're going to have to be in the room that they fit for the time. You know, that was that's a lot of emotions were in that the first time I went in the room. I'm like, oh, boy, <laughs> you know, you could cut the tension with a knife. It was close to the time that that happened. But I think that those two schools have been super respectful to us and to and you know publicly you just don't see that animosity out there you get on the you know campus uh what do you call the fan lines and stuff it's a different oh, yeah. story i'm not talking about yeah, that the, the fan boards the fan message boards, boards but yeah. I, I think that it's attributed to the the legacy um eight that are in that room and joe and chris at oklahoma texas that they made it work for the two years that they had to be there so that being said like that makes me feel like it was the right decision. And now, you know, on their, their, we've had a, a, you know, two years of when we talk membership or other key things, the broadcast rights agreements. We're just the mm. ten of us, excuse me, twelve of us. Um, and in those times, I say to myself a lot, man, this feels good. This this feels like there's good collaboration, um, good partnership, yeah. very strong relationships. And like walking out there today. You know, those guys, I, I know those, those dudes are my brothers now. BYU Athletic Director Tom Holmo is on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, we'll finish with this. One of the favorite phone calls I've ever received came from you in early September of 2021. I was sick, really sick with COVID. And you called me up and you said, Spencer, I need you to get better because big things are happening. I can't tell you what's uh, what's happening, wow. but I need you to I need you to get healthy because big things are happening, and uh, you know that, that was uh, one very kind gesture of you, and it means a lot to me. But I was so happy to be involved that I got healthy in, in time enough. Good job to be there, you know, and you motivated me in that regard. You missed week one. Um, you came back the I week of back, the invite yes. in Utah, and and you that were a big awesome. part of like yeah. me just like okay hunkering down more faithful, more prayerful, like, can I be okay for this? Well, you, that's special because that was confidential, and I must have just been bursting at the team to tell somebody, <laughs> yeah. and you are I think you're the only one I ever told. Yeah, you yeah. didn't tell me, Tom. But you, I didn't tell you what was you happening. You didn't tell me. You just said big things are happening. Right, you just right. missed a number you, I need you yeah. to get healthy. Um, but that just, I, I wanted to share that because that, no, that was, was cool. a very meaningful thing for me, um, and uh, um yeah, just so cool to see this come to fruition. Tom brought you back from COVID. Quite, that what you're quite literally. Quite literally. <laughs> that I mean, has cured you. It was like, okay, Spencer, let's go. Let's Lazarus. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, so great. But, uh, yeah, we're we're so happy to be part of this with you here at AT&T Stadium and, and to see this come to fruition. Now, hold on. We ain't done yet. We're not done yet. I mean, I just, like, I want to – I had a great time today, but I, I – I think the boys and we're going to go out and the, our crew are going to go check out Mission Impossible yep. tonight and start. And then, and then tomorrow, we got games. It's on, man. I, I, I can't. I, there can't be any more can't wait. parties. It's just got to be game time. Let's, and let, then when the season starts, we'll party a little bit. Let's do then it. Then it's Mission Possible. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Oh, boy. Uh, let's go. <laughs> Tom, thanks for uh, spending some time with us. Cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. He is the athletic director at BYU, Tom Homo, and said some things that have never really been publicly stated there. Yeah, about the Pac-12, when he got the phone call the From week of Bob the Arizona Bowlesby? game in Las Vegas and so on and so forth. I, yeah, I, I, I would like to think that if BYU got a Power 5 invite previous to 2021, that it would have been the Pac-12, and they would have said yes. I would have loved that. We would have all loved that. But now that BYU is in the Big 12, it feels like waiting was worth it. Well, not waiting, just the the timing worked out 
And it was funny that he thanks Texas and Oklahoma. I've been told <laughs> before, and I think you have as well, maybe it was the same convo, that Texas and Oklahoma initially in 2016 weren't too keen on BYU being in the league or anyone, and they didn't add anyone. But once they went to the SEC, they ceased to have a vote, and then it was like, now BYU's in, and we're finding the others. Yeah, well, we're hearing so, Again, thank you to UT and OU for leaving because BYU now has this Power 5 opportunity, and we are in Dallas. They just had to knock down the dominoes to get this thing rolling, man. Mm-hmm. All right, still on the way. For day two of our Big 12 Media Days coverage, BYU quarterback Keaton Slovis. Why playing for offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick is so vastly different compared to his previous programs. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're here for you. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Welcome back to Big 12 Media Days from Arlington, Texas. I am Spencer. He is Jerem. This is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. This interview segment is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. And it features one of the premier defensive linemen in all of college football. He is Dante Corleone from Cincinnati. Dante. They call him the godfather for good yeah, reason. Let's go. What's Welcome up, Dante? to the Thank show. You. Thank you for having me. Well, what do you think of this Big 12 madness now that Cincinnati's uh, making the Power 5 jump and you're welcomed here at AT AT&T Stadium? Yeah, um, it's something new, you know, coming out now. It was different last year, you know, being on Zoom. But I I like the environment. You know, it's a blessing being here. All the great teams paid the way for us to be here. So we're blessed. It's a blessing. uh, Good feeling to be here. As a Cincinnati guy, what's it like for Cincinnati to get into the Big 12 now? Um, I don't think – I mean, we're glad to be here, but, like, that's over. Like after we take the fight back home, it's time to compete. You know, we go to higher ground in Indiana, somewhere we we it's just nothing but football and we bond. So that's our, that's what we're gonna be focused on as soon as I, we get back. I mean, Bearcats football is only two years removed from making a run to the college football playoff. Yes, sir. So I mean, high level football has happened in the very recent yeah. past at Cincinnati. A little bit of a step back last year, and you got a new head coach now. So how are you taking a leadership role to try and help the Bearcats? get back moving in the right yes, direction. Sir. So since day one, you know, Coach Nico, our strength coach, and then Coach Brown, you know, those guys challenged me since day one to be more vocal. You know, I'm a guy people respect because I put the work in, but I was never vocal. You know, I, I, I would say something to somebody, but it's not out loud. I wouldn't hold them accountable. But since day one, you know, those guys challenged me that in the off season, and I, didn't, I, uh, I think I got better in that. And then also he challenged me for my weight. You know, he wanted me to be lean, 
mean, you know, so I can be a three-down guy, not be a two-down guy. So those are key points. When they first got here, they challenged me. Uh, 318 pounds. How's the lean coming? Good. Yeah? Yeah. What, what do you eat to get more lean? Uh, it's not necessarily what you eat. It is how you just don't overeat. You know, you eat. Uh, one of my strength coaches is like, don't eat to be full. Eat to be sat. Don't be eat. Don't eat to be satisfied. Eat to like hold you for a couple more hours. So that was a big thing for me. So I try not to overeat anymore. Then we run so much now with the new staff. So yeah. I'm running as fast, like probably the fastest I've been in a long time. So okay. I shout out to Coach Nico and his strength coach. That's terrible news for BYU football. <laughs> <laughs> and every team you play because of the big yes, I was going to offer you anything you want over here at the snack it table. It sounds like that's You're not... welcome to it, but you don't have to take yeah, it if you don't right. want to. You, you were the highest rated defensive player in pro football focus last year. What did that mean to you to get that those good grades? And did you, did you agree? Did you feel like you had a great year? For me, I feel like I still like this year. I got way much like to prove. I feel like I didn't really do nothing last year. You know, I was a backup player, just helping my guy out, starting, you know, giving him rest if he needed. So that was kind of my role. But now we switch. You know, he's he's moving to end now, and I'm playing. I'm the starting role. So I'm just kind of like like that's last year. I'm more focused on helping my team in this new defensive scheme because you know I got to be the center piece of it. So we feel like a puzzle. So if somebody don't do their job it's going to it's going to expose us so everybody got to hold we got to hold each other accountable we got to communicate in tough environments like BYU for example so we got to be ready for that but we were uh ready to be uh opening up in the nip against uh Eastern Kentucky so it's it's going to be loud and it's going to be fun this year we're looking forward to seeing you in Provo on September 29th we appreciate uh you know uh your generosity and your time to come and hang out with us and sure. are, by the way are you a Bengals fan of course let's go who <laughs> day? Let's he's, go. He's a Let's fan. go, yes, man. He's the one in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Awesome. Thanks, Dante. Yes, sir. All right. Coming up on BYU Sports Station, we take a look at Keaton Slovis, BYU quarterback interview as he goes two-on-one to discuss what makes playing for the Cougars so vastly different than the other programs he's been involved with. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Celebrate rewardflation at Mountain America. Get double rewards on every purchase with your Mountain America Rewards credit card to help with fuelflation, foodflation, and phytoflation. And on top of double rewards, every time you use your card, you'll be entered in Mountain America's smartphone giveaway. Details at macu.com slash double. Double your rewards today. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. So here's an experienced guy that's been there and done it before. Wants to take the jump from college football into the NFL. Follow suit of Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall in an A-Rod offense. And, and with Aaron Roderick's creativity and Epps and Hall and Roberts and Rex and company, you know, the sky's the limit. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Big 12 Media Days in